What's up, you guys? All right, time to pick up a load here, and um, we're gonna be going to Bakersfield to uh, pick up at Bolt House Farms on the east side of town. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start this video uh, a little earlier than I normally would because I'm in the Dashby Pass. I'm still um, getting into the Dashby area right now, and I'm starting to get snowed on. So, or is it sleet? I would call it uh, snow flurries and rain. So, just for you guys to have some, uh, some more viewing entertainment, whatever. I'll go ahead and uh, start early. I might run at higher speed though. Show is fogging up. Let me fix that. Uh, run my defogger at higher speed. Okay, this load's going to be going to uh, the Walmart DC in Temple, Texas. Man, this is. Oh, it's fogged up so much. When... Maybe me talking. I don't know. So, I've uh, got a lot of weather here, uh, not just the Hatchby, uh, which uh, I think was expecting uh, up, you know, maybe up to a few inches, let me double check, um, my normal route that I'd be taking with this load would be across I-40, but uh, Flagstaff area is expecting the snow at least four inches or so. Uh, that's gonna start with tonight and go on through Wednesday, I think it was. Wednesday evening at the very least, which is two days from now. So for that reason, I'm I'll more than likely take this down to the I-10 route and try to stay away from the snow. And I don't mind the snow, it's just the idiots who end up in it and cause the interstate. Uh, get shut down because of accidents or whatever that's my problem we're not uh, we're also not wanting to be around the uh, you know, possibly get caught up in someone else's mess myself now we're coming up on the dash PX here where the flying J loves are at uh, again I don't really plan to talk a whole lot between here and there just kind of give you an update what's going on and then Maybe run higher speed so you at least can have the weather to look at. Um, okay, so first, last thing you saw for me was I picked up a load at Saputo in Tulare. I was uh, I was under the impression that I was going to deliver that in Florida myself, but that changed. Um, I got it all the way home. Stayed the night at my house, and then on the 24th, uh, when I wake up in the morning, I got a, I noticed I had a message from my, uh, not my DM, but one of the other DMs, asking me for my ETA to the San Bernardino yard, because, quote unquote, the other driver was waiting for it. I'm like, huh? I didn't know anything about dropping this load. And if I had known that, I would have dropped it in the, in the drop yard last night when, uh, when I got into the area, but... Nobody told me anything about dropping it, so and it had enough time on it where I could sit under it for a couple of days and still deliver it on time. So I just assumed I was going to take it myself. Ended up finding out, yeah, they they did indeed want me to uh, give it to the other driver, uh, but I I was I already had uh, an appointment set up to uh, get a rental vehicle on the 24th. And going down by the, if I had known a little bit earlier, I would have been okay with taking it to the drop yard. But the time of morning that it was when I finally saw it, uh, I was going to interfere with my ability to make it to my uh, car rental appointment on time. So I ended up saying, I asked him if the other guy could come up to uh, my area. Now, originally, it was going to have uh, have him meet me uh, meet me uh, down the street from Americold, where I keep my truck parked. But he ended up, I uh, guess, while he was on his way up, asking if uh, if I could uh, just meet at the pilot in Asperia. 
I told him, well, here's the thing. It's only a 10 mile drive from my house to Hesperia. I don't mind going there if I, if, it, if I can PC over there and not get a log violation, but said if, uh, if there's a chance I might get a log violation for going over there, you know, and uh, PCing, then uh, I'd rather not move. Because I'm not going on duty for 15 minutes for a pre-trip. And uh, driving over there, logging, uh, logging as much time as uh, for pre-tripping as it takes to get over there, practically. And then just PC back to my house after that and have to log more time for a post-trip. So, like, that was just stupid. And, I was doing, uh, and I'm already doing him a favor by giving him the load. So, anyway, yeah, I, I didn't really mind giving up the load. The problem was the communication issue. I would have rather be clearly given instructions to drop it in the drop yard because they didn't tell me anything about what to do with the load after I picked it up. Then I ended up meeting him at uh, the pilot in Hesperia. I ended up getting there right at the exact same time as him. He's coming in from the Joshua Street side and I was coming in from the other side where the truck wash is um, at the same time, simultaneously, you know, literally. And I had my boys with me, of course, and then uh, I gave him the load. And here's something else. I also, uh, I was telling uh, my son, because my son wanted to crank the landing gear, so I told him, go ahead and crank it until you're about an inch off the ground. And then the other guy was talking about, go ahead and crank it all the way to the ground. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I was like, it's, uh, that's, just, that's only what assholes do. It's like you uh, crank it all the way to the ground and you run a higher risk of height fitting it. And also, it takes more work, especially if it's a loaded trailer like that. That was over a 40,000 pound load. Now, then you have to, uh, you have a side load and front load or rear, uh, back load, whatever, on the landing gear between uh, the fixed and telescoping parts of the gear. And it's a lot of work. I mean, it's more effort to get the, the landing gear cranked. And I told him, you don't, you don't do that. You don't need to crank it that far down. So, yeah, and sure enough, I end up telling my son, uh, you know, just leave it at least a good inch or so off the ground, and then we'll drop the airbags and pull out from it. Then I get over to the other guy's trailer, but she did it his way before I even got to, uh, before I got pull out, got out of my truck. And then it was sitting high, and I, uh, I didn't exactly high pin, but my, my, uh, the kingpin went into my fifth wheel too high. To a point where it didn't latch, but uh, it also I also had trouble pulling back away from the fifth from the kingpin because it was grabbing. So I ended up having to be a little bit more forceful to get it out of there. And uh, you know, it's normally I you know, I have my normal process. Uh, look at the I mean uh, watch the uh, the rear axle. As soon as the rear axle gets underneath the trailer. If I don't feel it by then, yeah, if I don't feel it squatting by then and I don't see any indication on my uh, load pressure gauge, my suspension load gauge, I usually just stop right then and there and get out and, and, uh, and start cranking a landing gear. So that ended up being a great example. Don't freaking crank the landing gear all the way down. I don't know why people get taught that bullshit. Whoever teaches you that, it's not very bright. They're taught wrong, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Again, everyone has their own way of doing things, but I will never advocate doing it that way. Why make it hard when you don't need to? More cranking to get the landing gear down, and more cranking, more difficult cranking to get the landing gear back up off the ground once you're hooked up to it. And not to mention, you run. You don't have to worry about high pin in the high pin in the king pin. Yeah, well, high pin in. If you're not really sure what that means, that means uh, basically where the king pin slides over the top of the fifth wheel, 
and it either gets stuck on the on the in between the fifth wheel on the sleeper area or the back of the cab, or it even you can even go so far from, uh, back up so far that the front of the trailer will actually bang into the uh, the back of the tractor and do damage to both the trailer and the tractor. So don't take those stupid chances like that, guys. Okay, um, kind of working our way down the the west uh, the west side of Tashby Pass now. Uh, actually, I don't think we're even in King yet. We'll see how rain here, but there is a little bit of snow expected in this area. And of course, I was starting to get a little bit earlier. Because of the rain, I do have concern about my driver's side uh, rear camera. Um, I noticed when I picked up the load in Zaputa and in Tulare, whatever, uh, right when I was going across the, the, the Catskill at Flying J, my uh, my rear camera quit working, and I didn't, I wasn't able to get full backing footage uh, after I got through scaling and uh, parking in one of the spots there. Well, at least I got most of uh, the most of the footage I wanted with it, so that was good. Um, I did order a new camera for that side. So uh, when it does come in, which I don't really accept, I, I told him I went ahead and ordered it through regular USP uh, Postal Service. Um, so it'll, it'll probably be at least a good week or so by the time it gets here, and which I was fine with because I knew it wasn't going to show up before I was going to be ready to head back out anyway. So I just figured, alright, it'll be here when I get home again, so you know, we'll call it, you know, hopefully have a more reliable uh, set of cameras hooked up then. Um, I, I suspect that on the Saputo pickup, maybe it had something to do with uh, moisture getting into the connector here, where, uh, where the camera hooks up the extender cable, and possibly caused it to sort out or something, I don't know. After, uh, after I dry, uh, the weather dried out and I got closer to home and uh, you know, everything was hunky dory there, um, it seemed like the, the, the camera went back to normal, so yeah, there's that kind of stuff going on. Alright, anyway, all I'm seeing right here so far is rain and I don't really expect to uh, I'm already getting close to the western side of the area that is uh, at a, that is most likely to see any snow at all. Uh, basically, it's, a, it's an ele elevation related issue. Um, once we get down below a certain elevation, it becomes much less likely to see snow. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here. Uh, we'll skip either we'll probably skip ahead or run high speed, whichever. Uh, over from here down to uh, before we get off the uh, before we get off the highway. Okay, guys, we're getting into the east end of the Bakersfield area here, uh, about a mile away from the exit that I'm planning on taking, which is the Wheat Patch Highway exit, also known as State Route 184. Um, Wheat Patch Highway you can't really miss because there's a uh, a small truck stop on the south side of the highway here on the south side of highway 58 at this exit a uh, good place to cat steal your load as well uh, if you're picking up uh, anything in the area uh, instead of going on the south side of the of 58 we're going to go north a uh, very short distance and then hang a left on edison highway and go down go west on edison and down the street on the left side will be the shipper. I have been to this place before. I don't think I have video footage of it, though. I could be wrong, but I don't think I do. Uh, I think I, last time I was here, I think I remember it taking a few hours or so. I think I waited a little bit for a dock door, like, you know, maybe an hour-ish, whatever the case was, and then... Maybe, 
probably sat in the dock door another hour and a half or whatever it was. It's been so long, I don't remember, but I never didn't stand out as anything remarkably short or long, which usually an indication that uh, I was probably there for about a few, uh, two to three hours. Okay, I can't see very well because these signs here on the, I can see traffic coming, but there are signs here on these uh, light poles and other stuff here. It just they got really hard for them. Like they're, yeah, we're clear. And they got a red light over here anyway. Not like they, not like they, anybody can go very fast. Okay, we'll get across the railroad tracks here, and the light right after that will be Edison. Satellite view uh, map. There is a guard shack. Um, this isn't Edison, is it? Um, ah, yeah, I think. I don't know. I'm at the right spot, so yeah, I think this is Edison. I was expecting to go on the other side of the tracks, but no, the tracks are just north of the the turn I want to make so that kind of threw me off I was expecting to cross the tracks but it, it's been a while I see a train down there to uh, the back end of one okay it is divided road here I'm gonna stay left because we're gonna be turning left here before long Usually when you pick up in the uh, Bakersfield area, you can usually expect to be picking up a load of carrots. The last time I picked up here, I remember coming here expecting that it would be a carrot load, but then when I actually got my, I got I finished getting loaded and saw my bills and all that, and saw the product itself, uh, I believe it was actually uh, like some kind of fruit beverages or whatever, not necessarily carrot either. Okay, now I'm going up. Across the set of tracks here. Uh, we'll go right past, I think it'll be the light coming up. Because this guy is coming out of the other side of, uh, come on. There are a bunch of trucks right there, but I think that was, ah oh shit, that was the one I wanted. The, damn it. Yeah. Let me slide over here, this is messed up. Now I'm going to have to figure out where to turn around because... I'd rather go Fairfax South. Ah. Let me get back over on the other side. I take Fairfax back down to uh, 58 and then come back around. So that was the same driveway I was expecting. Let me signal right. I can see a couple of cars coming up back there. I gotta wait for these guys though. At least a couple of cars back there. God damn it. Come on. I can't go until these cars go by. Alright. Yeah, the easiest way to un uh, unfuck myself will be to just go south on Fairfax here. Back down to 58 and then just circle back around in a loop. Uh, if 
might cross over. It's kind of looks like there might be a. Uh, yeah, I don't think I uh, don't think there's a way for me to cross over. It doesn't look like it's uh, look like it's divided highway right there. I can tell it doesn't look like I, uh, there's a. It's possible to get turned around right here. Yeah, it's. Yeah, there's an island here, so no problem. It's not that big a deal. It's, uh, it's a nuisance issue here, but we got a plan of attack for if we miss the drive uh, miss the driveway and know how to correct it. Come on, so got this. This is kind of a pain here though, because you can't see over the top of the hill there, the overpass. And every time, uh, every time I look, there's somebody new coming. I'm not going to keep playing this game. For all I know, that could go on, uh, go on forever, so, <laughs> yeah. We're not going to play that game. Okay, I could take Brundage Lane back across too, but I don't know for sure that's a truck legal street. And got 58 right up here, the very next light, so it's just safer bet to go ahead and take 58 across. I see a yellow sign up there. I can't read it though. Through traffic birds left. Okay, so I could have gone that way. Okay, I'm good on eastbound 58 here. The left turn. Yeah, this is another one of those cases where I see where I'm at on the map, but it doesn't, it's not updating as quickly as I need it to. And it looked like I was uh, by the driveway, the, the, the slanted drive, or the, slanted, the driveway that comes at an angle, whatever. And not the actual, uh, the, uh, the one that I was expecting to go into. But it turned out that other truck was coming out of the same driveway that I wanted. It was just because I there there was supposed to be another driveway before it that maybe I didn't notice or I just assumed that because well when I was looking at the map, I glanced at the map, it looked like to me where he, that he was coming out the driveway that that had the, that comes in, comes into Edison Highway at an angle. too far before that light for Fairfax though. Yeah, we're here early enough. 
software, it's okay. I have a 2000 pickup time, it is currently 1927. So, even with going back around, uh, as you see, it's not that big a deal here. That was Brundage right there. Highway here. Will that green arrow stay green? Hopefully. Yeah, we're good. Alright, now let's not miss the driveway this time. on the map. Actually, the railroad crossing right here looks like. And we're going to make this left coming up here. Is there even a left turn line here? I can't tell. Right. Okay, they do have a scale that you're going to go across as you're as you're coming in. So when you come here, it's a good idea to try to come here with as much fuel as you can. Although me personally, I'm not interested in buying California fuel that I don't need to buy. So um, I did buy some at Pilot and Boron on the way here, but I'm not gonna not gonna max out my tanks with 460 a gallon fuel. Sorry. Alright guys, we're going to pull up onto the scale here now, get checked in. Um, I do need, it is a produce load, so I am going to need my license plate information. Uh, that's typical with all produce shippers. They're going to want you to... fit. Only my trailer is going to fit. Get my tandems on there. Okay, I was having a hard time figuring out how long the scale actually was. All right. Uh, yeah, what's coming up? Didn't think I was long enough. <laughs> All right. All right. Sorry, the overshot. It's. I could have sworn that scale was shorter than it really is. I mean. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of trucks here. Guys, we're gonna uh, we're done. Uh, they're gonna we give me a call when it's time. Come on. 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 Come on.
Now, I kind of like these trucks that are all backed in over here. getting in and out of here with the ground being like it is. Not the most, no, hang on. This guy just screwed up what I got. Now, I'm not blindsiding into that spot over there. This guy walking over here, right in the area where I want to put my trailer in my truck. I've got my tenants way out in the middle of nowhere right now. I just want to get them a little bit closer to the lane there. That's nah, not good enough. On the other side of that wider gray Volvo, whatever that thing is over there. Tires closer to that Volvo. Probably tighten it up get closer to that guy here, though. A little bit crowded, and Make sure anybody else checking in has room to park. Or, I mean, there's plenty here to for whoever needs to park to have room to park, whatever. So I'm obviously not going to be very interested in getting out of my truck and sliding tandems or whatever right here. So I will leave the tandems where they're at. And when it's time to dock in and I actually get over to where the dock doors are at, I'll worry about that. Um, yeah, I don't need to be tracking a lot of mud into my truck. So not to mention these new shoes, uh, pretty new shoes that I have. All right. Um, We'll have some more footage coming up here for you guys when I get docked in, right? So hang tight. All right, guys, well, I got a dock door. I barely even got a chance to get back there and uh, take my shoes off by the time they were already calling me and telling me to go ahead and dock in to door 45. Uh, docking. Okay. Oh. This guy's getting ready to come in over here. As soon as I figure out what he's gonna do, I'll go ahead and move, but. Cause he could end up coming over this way. 
be smart, it would uh, go the other direction and uh, straight side into here. Because you're going to find there's not any real room to work with here. We freaked him out a little bit getting close to the front of his truck, but I was watching, dude. I know. <laughs> I watch my tenants all the time. six are over here on the right. I remember last time I came here I also docked in over on this side. Okay, 45 look like to be right next to this guy with the Mac, so... Let's get the tandem slid and doors open. Square up with the trailer there. Okay, it won't be enough room for a straight back, but it's all right. Sight sides are always fun to show. Get the pins, uh, tandem slide pins locked in. Uh, hopefully, I got backing uh, back rear camera video for you. I don't know. Thought I just saw something uh, glitch on the right with the corner of my eye there. Ah, we'll go for the point at this K rail here. Might have been a little bit too far. So pretty quick and easy here so far. Uh, when I get through loading, uh, there will be uh, 
the shipping office is back over here by yeah, I can't remember what door that is. Kind of, if I remember, right, it's on this end of that other wing that's back there to the right. So uh, we'll show you that too when uh, yeah when it's time to dock out. Okay, guys, we're all done here. Well, I believe. They have a really goofy checkout process though. Uh, I guess what was supposed to happen was the uh, loader was supposed to come out and put a glad hand lock on my trailer. Uh, I don't think that ever happened though. And they're also supposed to come back out and take when they take the glad hand off, uh, lock off, actually tell me that I could uh, check out. And check out is up there that, uh, that portable building I guess you would call it to the right of uh, the scale that I had checked in at earlier uh, it's just self-service kiosk uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hook up my airline again and move the uh, the wheel chalk out of the way we'll get out of here Okay, I'm gonna get some air going into the trailer. I think, uh, cause I've only used this trailer a couple times so far uh, since I acquired it from another, that other driver. Now when I gave up my, uh, my load to Florida to the other driver, I got a empty trailer in return for it. That's this one that's behind me. It's the first load I've done with this trailer. But uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, a couple times I've used it, I can tell it's, uh, the air is going somewhere while the brakes are set. Go ahead and pull forward. Should be enough room for me to should be enough room for me to close my doors as well right here. Just get forward enough. Yeah. yeah. I'm not loaded yet, dumbass. Stupid things demanding load info, and I, I haven't even sent the load in a departure call. Okay, now last, uh, last pallet is not that close to the back of the trailer and it's not that high up either so pretty sure I won't have any scale pumps with this though. Getting the pins to come out, uh, the, the slide pins to release though is another, uh, to get out of the way is another question. Ah, that's it right there. Okay, let's get our slide tool back out and get out of here. Okay, so I already got my bills. It's just a self-service kiosk. There's like four of, them, four of those kiosks in that portable building. Uh, I haven't even looked at how much the load weighs or anything like that. Maintain at 34. Uh, let's see what JCT wants it at. That's not the right load. Plus 35, okay. I uh, also didn't notice if there's a seal number on here or. 
Yeah, one three zero four eight seven five. So, where's this seal come from? Okay, 43,666 supposedly on the weight, so hopefully I'll get the seal from up there at that guard shack thing. Uh, like I said, nobody ever came over here, and I've been, uh, according to this, uh, the bills, uh, they were done loading me uh, close to, uh, closer to two hours ago. I just don't know the process here. It's been so long since I've been here. We and have eight hours and zero minutes at the they didn't have this kind of process last time I was here. I actually went in the building. Now you go over there by the building and there are signs up saying no drivers pass this point so you can't even get near the office. All right, I'm going to go ahead and yard move it to check out at Shipper. Uh, I'm going to end up going over to the Pretty sure I closed my doors, but yeah, I'm, I was seeing the pads on the dock door, and I was getting the illusion that my doors were open, the trailer doors were still open, but yeah, it was just the pads on the dock door. It just, yeah, it just happened to go, go extend past my trailer by the same uh, about, uh, probably about the same distance that I would uh, expect my uh, my trailer doors to come out by when I when I have them open. Okay, there will be a, well, actually I can scale out here as well, so don't know how accurate their scale is, but uh, and hopefully this seal that's on here it's, I know I get the bills from here, but I don't know. I guess I'm supposed to get the bills and then come over to this uh, booth over here to check out or something. I, like I say, it would have been, been nice to know earlier that as soon as my door light turned green or whatever, somebody was supposed to come out, but they didn't. I'd kind of like to get the load moving at least. He's a regular axle scale, so. Come on. Now's not the time for this. get the seal from this guy right here uh, gross weight was 76 something um, said I'd have to go back over like one axle at a time to get the axle weights but I told him oh, I'm not worried about it it's especially if it's a, if it's gross in 76 then uh, I can always I mean the only way station I because I'm gonna take I uh, you uh, highway 58 across And the only, I'm going to see the way station on the eastbound side of Tehat and Tehatchby. But, come on. Um, that one's going to be close. And if I really had that kind of, uh, had a concern about the weight, which I don't, because uh, I see my, uh, my drive axle weight is probably right in the area where I want it to be. Uh, I can tell by that uh, it's it's just it's a little bit below 70 psi. So I know my drives are legal, and based on what I saw, uh, what the product looked like, and where it was positioned, and all that, 
I'm pretty sure it's going to scale just fine regardless. But if I had to worry about California way stations, then that's easy to deal with. So let me get my lock and seal on there and then uh, send departure info and we'll get out of here. Guys, we'll get out of here. I'll go ahead and cat scale it anyway. I know it's gonna scale fine, but I can always use a, a get a fresh drink and all that kind of stuff too. So, and uh, yeah, it's a good spot for me to end the video, swap out my SD cards and stuff like that. right here let's go okay so a normal way I would want to go with this route would be to take 58 across the Barstow and then I-40 all the way across to Amadillo 287 down and I don't know if I'd want I don't know I would even consider taking uh, maybe 84 down from Santa Rosa down to Lubbock and uh, work my way down to Sweetwater on I-20 and kind of start cutting across that way too. But, uh, that would be the ideal way, I think I would say, with uh, out concern about weather issues. But they say it. Uh, Flagstaff area is expecting snow to, uh, today all the way into Wednesday from what I can tell. So I'm not really sure I want to go that way. And I'm leaning more heavily toward taking I-10 across. Which is why I normally would go with... Uh, well, usually when I go to Temple, I pick up in Colton. But it's obviously different. Uh, ah, yeah, it's definitely accelerating on the slower side. Right here, and then uh, right on the other side of the, on the other side of Highway 58, we'll have uh, a left turn to make, kind of snake our way into the truck stop there. time to get this load to Temple. It's not due until the 30th at 1900 I think it was. Um, I'm going to need three shifts no matter what to get there. But they're, they're three pretty easy shifts. Uh, I'm only like 1500, uh, 1500 or so miles out. 
Yeah. Most of these guys, uh, most of these guys' fuel islands are taped off. Skill, so if anyone else needs to use it, all right, I got 77.1 on the gross weight also. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and end this one here. Uh, I want to appreciate. It. Thanks you guys uh, again for uh, hanging out, watching my videos. Uh, how stupid or great they are, or whatever. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, hopefully they're useful, or entertaining, or educational, whatever, some kind of purpose for you. Uh, meanwhile, I'm like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and work my way uh, probably down. Um, over 58 to 14, down to Palmdale, 138 from there to the, over to Cajon Pass, and then take uh, 15 and 215 down to 10, and then take 10 across uh, that way uh, for this route. So uh, it'll keep me away from the bad weather in the Flagstaff area and Western New Mexico as well. So again, uh, thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, peace.